So this is John showing us his code that works on the Micro McQueen by DF Robot. In this case, we're using the McQueen version 4 and the uh, mic uh, Micro Bit version 2. And we're showing that it does track and it does seek the line when it gets off. Now John's going to explain the code and how he came up with this ability to do that. This is a lot more consistent than last week and really totally different code. So we'll explain how that's done if you would, John. Okay, so the important part of all of this in the design was to minimize the amount of overhead. So I took out any extraneous code, tightened it up as much as possible. So the first part up here is where it has determined, read the sensors, and determines whether it's left and not right, it does this. If it's not left and right, it does this. And if it's left and right, it does this. Otherwise, it goes down into the face section. So these are where it knows that it's right on the track, one way or another, and it then uh, puts a turn on. And there's two different speeds I've defined, an F speed and a T speed. Those are, the T speed is somewhat slower, the turn speed. And that's how much turning it does as it's trying to readjust to keep on the line. Now it, this code is gonna be in the video description of this video. And we're also noting that we've got two different widths of black line here. One is the printed DF robot width right there. And then the wider is this black electrician's tape and it seems to track on both of them just as well. Now back to the description. Yeah. So, uh, for example, this, this last one, if it's got both left and right are uh, signaled from the, uh, received from the sensors, it just goes straight at the, at the full speed. Otherwise, you'll see the lights blinking on and off one side or another, and it goes back and forth fairly quickly and keeps on the line. However, that's assuming that it can see those, but if it gets off and it's now all of a sudden doesn't sense it, it then, as it, you'll see it wobbling here, see that both lights are on, what that means is that it's on white only, it's not sensed anything. Then it goes into this next section, which is phases. There are five phases that I've defined. The first one is as tight as possible what it does, and there's a timer involved in each of these. I keep track of how many times it goes through this overall loop. Looking for reading the sensors again, it reads the sensors on every time through the loop. If it still hasn't seen it, it increments, or it actually decrements the timer, and the timer gets down to zero, then that's when it um, um, stops and goes into the next phase. And so the first phase is to increase the Actually, it does the same adjustments as the upper part, but it continues doing it. So I've kept track of, was the last um, turn a left turn or a right turn or straight? So I keep track of the last action, and I just keep doing that action for a certain number of times. So it goes through the loop and keeps setting the, the, the motor, uh, the left wheel, the right wheel, keep doing that action. If that hasn't worked after it counts down and timer's down, down to zero, it then goes into phase two. Phase two is the exact same set of adjustments. However, the speed of the wheel, the slower speed wheel, is somewhat slower. So that makes the turn stronger. So now we're, that's where you'll see it wobbling on the line with bigger turns. If it get, keeps on track and then it gets back to where it's sensing the line, it goes clear back up to the top and it keeps doing that top part until it gets off too much. So it's going through that loop forever, but doing it very fast. Okay. Okay, so that's phase one, phase two. Now that's where I get, and we haven't seen this happen on here. Uh, with this test so far, uh, I've tested all of this later code, is when it starts getting off track. 
It's gotten phase one. It timed out. Phase two timed out. Now we're, it moves to phase three. And with phase three, what we're doing is going backward on both wheels. One uh, uh, for the left and the right, cranking it a little bit as it goes backwards, whereas if it had been straight before, it now goes backwards straight. And that's so that's phase three, as it backs up a little bit. And we can show that. I'll just take it and put it off on the paper to the side, and it'll start looking, and then it'll go backward, and then it'll go into phase three for a short period, backing up, Assuming that maybe it, it was just off the line a little bit and it tries to back up and catch the line. If that doesn't work, we then move into phase four. Phase four is where it goes, oh my, we've got really off. We haven't seen the sensor. We've counted down through phase one, two, three. We're now in four. Phase four, it starts doing tight turns, rotating big amounts, maybe almost all the way around. And then it goes forward in phase five and just goes straight for phase five. If the countdown now on timer five for phase five has gone down to zero, it then says, okay, we're really lost. Let's go back to phase four, but let's change the amount on the timer. So it mm -hmm. changes the amount of direction turn and how long it goes off. Now let's see if we can show that by being off altogether. It might be easier. I'll turn it over. We have more white on the other side. Now it thinks it's lost altogether and it's going through the phases that John talked about. There it's backing back up. It's testing, it's just searching. Yep. There, oh, no. Yeah, when it goes across the line, straight across the line, it doesn't have enough ability to get on track. incrementally getting closer mm -hmm. to a line because it's within a circle or an oval. And you'll notice that it's random different angles that it's going on. Almost. Almost made it to the line. Well there'll be more on this as we develop this and we're going to uh, be working with an altogether different bot car today to see if we can figure out if it works for that also. There it sensed it and almost got on track. 